Yeah, it turned out to be a $37 million email. <laughs> you raised $37 million. What's it been like moving over from the content side to the actually business VC side? It's been harder than I expected, to be totally honest. Uh, I was like making hiring decisions. I'm a YouTube content creator. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. The number is 37 million. It's a crazy number. I can't believe it worked. What was the experience of receiving the money? Truthfully, I've never mentioned this before. What do you think is the recipe for a good review? Why has your brand lasted from, since 20? 13. Right. Like it's, th you, there's a reason to that. I haven't admitted this yet, but I'm willing to right now. When did you go from, it's just me, to I'm comfortable building a business? This is the conversation I'm having with all my friends who are on YouTube right now. This isn't going to last forever. And I, I beg people, to, my, my fellow YouTubers, to understand that. Like, you will wish that you had done this. Anybody who tries to deny that is, is wrong. This conversation really surprised us. We drove down to Doug's garage thinking we were gonna have a conversation with him, primarily about his business cars and bids and his $37 million investment. But because Doug has been on YouTube for the past 10 years and made videos that have millions and millions of views, he had such a great perspective on how to grow as a creator. Instead of building a product and then trying to find an audience for that product, Doug built a community of car enthusiasts and then found a product that perfectly fit the wants and needs of that community. We believe that this is the future of entrepreneurship, everything being audience and community first. You've probably noticed that a ton of creators are starting to launch businesses online, and most of those creators are launching their businesses on Shopify. Shopify has been sponsoring this show for years now, and that's because they help millions of entrepreneurs, including ourselves, launch their businesses online. It's by far the easiest way to get a store up and running. Like with the Shopify starter plan, it's a $5 plan that can help you get a really simple store up in minutes. When we made these hats, it took us just about four hours to get our site up and running and start selling. And not only do we sell these on our Shopify store, they're also sold right here under our YouTube videos. And what's really cool is that if you're a creator that doesn't have your own product, you can find brands to work with using Shopify Collabs. So if you're interested in launching a business on Shopify, no matter what stage of your business that you're in, click the link in the description. All right, now for our conversation with Doug Demorrow. Doug, thanks for having us in your garage. Yeah. And trusting us to be this close to your car. I'm, <laughs> I'm terrified. I'm just as scared as you are. <laughs> I kind of wish you were on the other side. Yeah, even when I am, I'm just as scared as terrified also. <laughs> How much is this car? Uh, I paid a $1.25 million for this car. Oh my God. <laughs> I know. This is a 2005 Porsche Carrera GT. I can't believe it. So what put you in the position to buy the car? It's It's been a long time coming. So, you know, I left my real job. Um, this was to, or beginning of 2013, so it was over 10 years ago now, which is wild. I left that job and started, like, writing as a career, which is insane. Like, what was I thinking? I was 22. So that's like when you do that, you know? Then I was, I was like blogging about cars and someone, one of my viewers, one of my readers at the time was like, hey, you should make videos. And this was early 2013, 14. It hadn't hit me like I should make videos. And so like I literally took that person's advice and decided to start making videos. <laughs> and I put one out there and then two and then five and then 10. And now it's like 900. <laughs> um, so the videos all came from that. And then... Um, you know, like two, about three years ago, I, we came up with the idea of this auction website called Cars and Bids, where you'd buy and sell, you know, auction modern enthusiast cars. And that was a lot more successful than we expected it to be. We launched that in uh, early 2020, like June of 20, and we kind of thought it would instantly fail because it was COVID. But it turned out we were launching into the greatest car market in the entire history of the automobile. I had no idea. And so it took off and it's done incredibly well. And um, we recently took an investment. We sold a majority of that business. And um, I was lucky enough to, to be able to buy this car with that. <laughs> it seemed fitting. Even though it's so much money, I blew like an enormous portion of the money. <laughs> it just seemed fitting. It was like, I've wanted, truly wanted the car 18 years. It was like, it's, I got to do it. It's, my whole business has been cars. This is like the end goal. So I had to right. do it. When that investment comes, the number is 37 million. 37 million was the total. Now, obviously not all to me, but yes. Of course. The total, yeah. But that was the investment in Cars and Bids, yeah. which is the business you launch off the back of the YouTube channel. Right, right, right. For me, that number was so 
unbelievable, hard to even grasp. I printed out the headline and put it in our office because I just was like, I don't want to forget about this. I want to walk by it, see it and go, we need to talk to Doug and make sure that we were moving forward on setting up this interview because it was so unique in the creator space to see a number like that. The ideas started to form in early 19, spring of 19. At the time, it seemed like I, I, I just, it hit me. It was always hitting me. It was like weighing down on me that I wasn't, YouTube was not going to work forever. Someday my audience would be like, we're sick of this dude. And someday the algorithm maybe wouldn't, you know, you don't have much control when you're a YouTuber. Mm -hmm. And so it hit me that like, I got to do something. I got to take the audience and bring them somewhere that I can do monetize and that I can turn into a real business. It turns out that this is like kind of becoming a strategy for a lot of creators. But mm -hmm. at that time, I wasn't thinking like, oh, I watched so-and-so do a business, so I'm going to yep. do a business. It was like, it just was like, I was just like feeling it constantly. Like I have to be able to do something else with this. Mm. And yeah, it was, it's a crazy number. I can't believe it worked, but that's what happens when you have an audience and when they like really like what you're doing and you can like take them to something that is meaningful to them because it's meaningful to you. Yeah. I think on top of that, there's something that's called content product fit. What Samir and I call it, where you don't have to change your videos to incorporate your yeah. business or what you're yeah. selling. And for you, you can even like sell your own car. You review cars. Yeah. You have a Land Rover Defender. You can make a video reviewing the car and then send people to your own auction website yeah. where it will sell for almost $60,000. Yeah, like, yeah. That is incredibly unique for the creator space. This is my 2020 Land Rover Defender and I'm selling it. In fact, it's for sale right now, being auctioned live on cars and bids. Creating a marketplace in general is I think a little bit, like a lot of creators now at this point have kind of created products, yeah. which in retrospect, by the way, I wish I had done. <laughs> like, what type of product? I don't know, and, and I'm glad I don't have to yeah, think about yeah, that yeah. now, but like a marketplace is really hard. Right. And, and no one told me that at the beginning. I swear that 80% of my career success has been because I didn't realize how dumb so my <laughs> And then once you're in it, you're just in it. And yeah. like, you don't have a choice anymore. And um, over the last few years on my channel, I have kind of, I, I love reviewing these weird, quirky, like 90s and 2000s cars. Like that's my kind of my favorite. And the viewers prefer the new cars. And so one of the things that I've discovered was, here's an, a, an ability, I can go back and do these 90s and 2000s cars and monetize it in a different way, right? Like instead of having to make every video make the most money, I could review a car we're selling on the site and now I have access to this like weird car that mm -hmm. maybe I couldn't have justified financially before, but now I can. Yeah. And that's been a, like the coolest integration Interesting. of all. So like reviewing the Bugatti makes money from AdSense. Right, exactly. What's amazing is when you shift your audience, you're also shifting the business model, right? From like a pure play advertising business model, which requires 400,000, a million people to drive a significant business. Yeah. When you shift it into a marketplace or like uh, when the monetization model shifts, you don't have 400,000 you know, people buying cars on right. cars and bids. That's another, that's another thing that didn't really hit me with cars and bids. Like, People can't, even if they want to support and use the business, they can't like can. buy it all the time. Use, no. Sell yeah. it by all the mm -hmm. time. So it's like, damn, I wish I could with a business where people could use it frequently. But not everyone who watches your videos is going to transact with you. Like that is a different subset of the audience. Yeah. So you're actually just suggesting like, here's the top of the funnel, right? Which are my videos. And then That's I'm right. going to find the people who are really, really engaged and get them through the funnel into, until I find like the 10 or 5% of those people. Yeah. And if you're in the millions of views, 5% is extremely significant totally. to care about what you're doing. Absolutely. And yeah, that's, that's what makes the shift from like an advertising model to a more direct payment model or, you know, auction model um, really significant because you don't need that many people. Right. That's right. You don't. And it's obviously high value transactions. And so, right, you know, right. but yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, we made a transaction. We bought, right. we bought a car bought for, yeah. for $9,000. You guys yeah. bought a car and the story you told me was that you bought it and within a few hours you owned it, including the title. <laughs> within, within two hours. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Within two hours. It's just that easy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was actually insane that, you know, we, we do, we do a series where we review creator merch and that's where like we were reviewing a bunch of products and then we were like, well, Doug has a marketplace. Let's <laughs> he has car. essentially the craziest yeah, product. Yeah, yeah. Do you still own this car? We oh, still yeah. own the it's car. 1992 Mercedes 190 E. e. Yeah. Yep. White. Mm -hmm. It's sweet. And that has two different mirrors, like side view yeah. mirrors. Yeah. Like yeah. That was the thing Mercedes yeah. did back then because the, the pet traffic would pass it. Yeah. The, the, like the Germans overthought everything. Right. Um, it's sweet though. It's cool. And like the craziest thing was buying a car sucks. Yeah. 
buying a car for me, I hate it. Mm-hmm. Like I hate going to a car dealership. The yeah. whole thing sucks. And you made the process, like you, you made the process fun and enjoyable. Yeah. Like the, the tension of the auction was incredible. Yeah. Like we were yeah. sweating in our yeah, office. That's like the worst part yeah. is like, am I going to win it? Oh my God. Yeah, this yeah, is yeah. Yeah. Do I go even higher? Yeah. You know? yes. I've been there when a few of my buddies were like closing in. On right. The, right. And it's just like, everybody's terrified. Right. 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 It's not, it's a fun. Good it was fun. <laughs> and then, it, fun. and then again, two hours later, we have the pink slip and we just have a car. That was crazy. And, and then we took a drive on the beach and we were like, <laughs> Oh my yeah. God, this is crazy. We own this car now. Yeah. We are not car guys for sure. You know, like I, look at cars as like, I get it. It could be anything I get right. in and I drive from point A to point B. If it has, if it has AC and a Bluetooth connection, <laughs> right. I'm pretty happy. Right. Um, but you're like a real car guy, like for real. Yeah. And what's incredible to me is your story to like becoming, you know, becoming who you are on YouTube is such an authentic path from correct me if I'm wrong, but the first time you saw a Carrera GT was on a date. Yeah, it was on my first date ever as a child. Right. I was 16 or 15 or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And you saw a yellow. It was, it, that one was silver. But silver. then later okay. I ended up seeing another yellow one. And I okay. just, yeah, it's been a whole, it's like been this thing that has survived my yeah. whole life, basically. So that date, seeing the car, how did that, how did that impact you? Like what happened next in your love of, was that the beginning of your love of cars or was it no, before that? But it was an impactful thing in the sense that, um, no one believed me that I had seen the car. Mm. And so I started carrying around a digital camera everywhere. Yeah. Which at the time it was massive, ridiculous digital camera, right? It's, you know, I didn't have one on my phone. So I was like, if when I see another one, I'm going to prove to everybody <laughs> yeah. that I actually saw this It's thing. like Bigfoot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <that's laughs> exactly. exactly it. It's the stupidest thing in the world. But well, yeah, I was 16. So, so I did that. And, um, and that kind of started touched on touch was like the touchstone of the whole thing. I eventually had an article written about me in automobile magazine as like a car spotter. And wow. from that article, I was hired to do another thing, which led to another thing and another thing. And effectively it like started off my whole wow. world. And you know, the girl I was on the date with, I don't even really know. I have no idea what she's doing. That was all that turned out to be irrelevant, but the, <laughs> the car experience, that ended up really yeah. mattering. And so, um, like it, this wasn't like a, some like shrewd business. There was right. not much shrewd mm-hmm. business that went right, on right, here right. as much as I hate to admit that. Like I just loved cars. People are always like, Oh, do what you love. That's not necessarily the great advice, but it did somehow manage to work out. Yeah. For is, me. is there any DNA to those written blog posts that has carried over to the video? Like um, what, what made those written posts different? You know, I was like a humor car columnist, which isn't a job even. I don't know how I thought I would monetize this when I was, but I was 20. I just like, I was clueless. But the cool, the thing that happened with that was that I got an audience. So like a lot of other people were writing blog posts and they were running like 10 a day. Mm-hmm. And I would like write two a week. But because they were like humorous, it, it, there was more personality in them. Mm. And so I kind of got an audience. And so once I started making the videos, initially for the first few years, the videos were also pretty humorous and ridiculous. Mm. Um, I had an audience to come. It wasn't wow. just like an anonymous dude writing blog posts. It was like, hey, I like this guy. So I'm going to watch his videos too. Mm-hmm. And, and it was interesting because another piece of advice I would never give to anybody is like work for free. But I was essentially doing that, writing two columns a week. I mean, you're not making money doing that, but I did build up an audience that did eventually turn right. into a larger audience that did grow and grow and grow into this. How were so, you? You worked at a car dealership as well. I, I, I worked right? at a Saturn dealership. Do you remember Saturn? Yeah, of course mm-hmm. I remember yeah. Saturn. I worked yeah. at a Saturn yeah. dealership for a while. That was a disaster. <laughs> It was in 09, you know, yeah. the worst When of you the say worst. remember Saturn, is Saturn gone? Or is, are we done <laughs> yeah, with are we, Saturn? 2009 was the last really? one of the years. Wow. Really? Okay. Oh, wow. I did not even notice yeah. that Saturns were off the road. So <laughs> no, there's there some are well, still sure, they're here, yeah, yeah, but yeah. yeah. Not many though. And that was part of the problem. So this is the heart of the recession. So General Motors owned Saturn and a lot of the GM brands went away during the recession. It was just a giant machine of a company yeah. and they just jettisoned a lot of brands. So I was at Saturn in that time. I mean, we were selling nothing. <laughs> and so it was kind of a mess. But it taught me a great some great lessons about working in the car industry. I really learned how dealerships operated. And then from there, I went to work at um, Porsche's corporate headquarters, which was in Atlanta. And learned a lot more about the car business from sort of the back end, yeah. like the actual automaker perspective of it. And so those were like very formative jobs. And then I quit that to write about cars, which I had a, I had a brand new Porsche as a company car. And I was like, no, I'm out. I'm going to go blog. <laughs> <laughs> like, looking back on it, it was so <clears throat> stupid, <laughs> but it worked out. I think what's interesting is, you know, when you, when you first started out, 
you were, you carried a digital camera around to show your friends, right? Yeah. Like maybe 10 people. Yeah. Like your audience was. That's, I never thought about that, but yeah. Yeah. And I think that's something that makes a lot of YouTube creators origin stories very pure. Like I remember uploading one of my first videos to YouTube and seeing, you know, a couple hundred people watch and being floored, being like a couple hundred people. Like if 10 people watched my Mm -hmm. stuff, that would be cool. And it's cool to, to think back to that era of, I'm capturing something to show 10 people that yeah, I know are excited about. Idea. I never thought mm-hmm. about that as like, that was my audience, but that's yeah. so true. Mm-hmm. And that, then that's like, like the, the beginning. beginning. What's crazy is the amount of videos on your channel that have over eight and 10 million yeah. views, right? right. Mm-hmm. So what, what you tapped into was, yeah, there's 10 of your friends who are into this. But what I'm curious about is how, how and why are there that many people into cars? You know, it's an, it's an interesting question. I think about it myself all the time. And I think one of the things that I was lucky to do, and I think one of the things that any channel focused on something, some specific thing that then blows up mm. is lucky to do is get people who are not only interested in that one thing. And so I think one of the reasons my channel was successful is because I was able to appeal to non-car enthusiasts mm. because of my format. So I go through all these little quirks and features of the cars so I have a video titled, here's why the Rolls Royce Phantom is worth $600,000. If you're, you don't have to be into cars to be right. like, why the hell would someone pay $600,000? Yeah. And then you get in there and you're seeing there's like power operated curtains over the windows. Mm-hmm. And that is good content mm. regardless of like who you are and what you're interested in. Mm. That's almost like Casey's um, videos about like really expensive airplane seats. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. exactly the thing right. is like, we all can picture a car. We all get in a car. Exactly. And exactly. once you say something unexpected, this car is worth $600,000. You, you have to kind of lean in and go, why? Right. I kind I'm of interested. interested. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Why but, is that? Why is this Bugatti worth right. $2 million? Right. And I think that that was like the real key. And and I see as a result of that, I've actually gotten some flack from the like real hardcore car enthusiasts sure. because my videos are more generalist hmm. and they're like, you don't talk about the suspension travel and all right. that. And, but that's an intentional decision mm-hmm. in order to really appeal to this broad audience that I wanted to, I had to kind of give up some of the like really nerdy car geek stuff and focus on mm. like something that mm. more general people would want. And I think Casey hits that stuff super well. Right, right. What do people want to see? Yeah. If you can hit that, that's a, that's a mm-hmm. career. He yeah. would seldom talk about tech. He would talk about how something applies to someone's everyday life. That's right. How I yeah. use, you mm-hmm. know, he, I, there's that amazing video where he puts on the, the, you know, the camera glasses and like, yeah. just, just uses them. Yeah. And like the, the, that's, that's it. it. Instead of being like, it has this sure. pixel, mm-hmm. whatever. Yeah. Things that mean know. nothing to yeah. the majority of people. Right. I really think that's like a key to like broad mainstream success. Mm. I also think you're a bit of a historian. When you're talking about a car from the 80s, the 90s, the early 2000s, that car represents a moment in time. Yeah. The way it was designed, what it was used for. You know, there are some cars back then that had a phone with like a cord on it. You know, that that speaks to- People love that. And I think there's a nostalgia component of it too. Not only the generalist, like, what is this? Why is this new car so expensive? But like this car, this Mercedes was the king of the 1980s or something. It'll be a title. Well, you go in there and you're like, okay, why why did people like this car from the 80s? And oh, it had a phone, like double paned glass, whatever Mm -hmm. it was. And, you know, that kind of stuff, I think there's a nostalgia play there too, mm-hmm. which also appeals to a general audience. Yeah. Yeah. The one thing I love about what, you know, like like having your videos be about cars. Um, it's something we talked about with Marquez where he said, I don't have to be interesting. Tech has to be interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and like, so long as new tech is coming out, yeah, I have subject matter. Right. And we, we always talk to creators when they're starting out and trying to figure out you know, what their niche is or what they're talking about. What's really nice about an industry where new stuff is coming out or even there's old stuff to be nostalgic about is it's like reactive ideation, Yeah. right? Like your ideas are coming from the, so the industry. That's such a great mm-hmm. way to put it. Yeah. I never thought about that, but that is so true. I, early on, people would ask me, and I, was, I would be nervous. Am yeah. I going to run out of cars? Right. And the answer is the cars come out faster than I can review them. Exactly. In fact, I have to turn down a lot of the reviews because it's just, there's just too much. Yeah. It, thus, yeah. it will, it will forever be, mm-hmm. and there's always weird new stuff. And everybody's like, oh, these electric cars, they don't, the driving experience isn't all that different. How will you adapt? Well, the answer is the electric cars have even more weird stuff. And my whole thing is like the weird yeah. stuff that a car has. Like mm-hmm. what are the interesting things? Not just how it drives, but like what is actually, what, what does this button do? What does this screen do? Mm-hmm. And electric cars just continue to out weird each other 
in terms of sure. like, and I think actually thus my like think my whole persona is going to get even more content over the next few years yeah. as mm-hmm. more continually weird cars keep coming out. I wonder though how you stand out because similar to Marquez with tech, everyone has the opportunity to review the tech. Right. So for you and most creators, it's not about being first to the review because it's yeah. going to come out first on Twitter. Yeah. Right. And yeah. so you have to make something that has to stand the test of time. What do you think is the recipe for a good review? Okay, there's two things I think. I think about this a lot. There's two There's two big things. One is I think I have a really good eye for understanding all the little stuff in a car that people are going to be interested in mm-hmm. and understanding the little stuff that they won't. I think there are a lot of copies not copycat channels. There are a lot of other mm-hmm. channels that try to do a similar thing and don't quite get like, what is something worth talking about and what is something that people aren't gonna. And mm. I think I do a really mm. good job of like getting, like I feel, I've always felt I'm a journalist at heart and I, I feel like as a result, I'm like, a, I do a good job of like figuring out what people really wanna see and distilling it down mm. and making those things. But the number two thing, I was, I was, came, I showed up in 2013. Like, I really think, I hate to admit it, and I, and a lot of YouTube creators, I feel like maybe are kind of cagey about admitting this, but like, if I was starting now, people ask me, hey, what, what advice do you have? And my answer is take a time machine 10 years ago. I don't know. It would be mm. harder now. There simply wasn't as much competition then. And so I established this big audience yeah. oh, mm. then, yeah. and that, that helped. I, you, anybody yeah. who tries to deny that is, is wrong. I also think there's, um, there's a couple things here. One is like you started as a writer and I actually think a lot of video makers overlook writing. Like you're talking about writing out what matters and yeah. doing it in ways of like, can I say this in less words or how should I yeah. structure this, mm-hmm. right? When you were writing, you have to structure something to make sense. Yeah. A lot of times when we make a video and we feel like it doesn't make sense, we take to a Google doc or pen to paper and write, write down mm-hmm. what what is happening in the video and being like, Okay, wait, yeah, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, this if I told to be, that to a person yeah, in conversation, I, does that make sense? Does that make sense? Interesting. Yeah, Interesting. and so like the conversational or even like the readability of a video, I think is is really important. Yeah. The second thing I think is something that we call the Justin Bieber effect, which is, you know, early days with Justin Bieber, he was discovered on YouTube and there was a crop of fans who felt ownership over his career because they were early, early supporters. Right. And watching someone go through a rise, it's the similar thing of when you have a concert ticket you know, and you're like, I was seeing this band before anyone, yeah. before anyone thought they were popular. I think you probably have a lot of fans who are, like you said, reading your articles, who still to this day are like, I've been with Doug yeah. mm-hmm. since 2013. Yeah. And yeah. that sense of ownership and core community is really, really important. I, I think the third thing is that if people were trying to start today on YouTube, they're absolutely going to overthink it. Yeah. It's oh, just yeah. not even a question. question. You, you like, need to have a long period of time with nothing to lose and nothing to gain. Like you yeah. need to be in this that's unique huge, area it's a, that's, where that's you such are an interesting a hobbyist. Thing. That is exactly yeah. right. And that's such an interesting component of it that I think people don't quite like. I got lucky because I was writing about cars for, at the time, autotrader.com. So I had a steady paycheck, but that didn't take that much of my time. And so it was enough to bankroll my life, but I could spend that time you know, making YouTube videos. Yeah. And it, for it's it's tough to devote a year of your life to something that is not making money. Right. Yeah. Like that's not realistic for virtually anybody. But I was able to do it because I had another career. And I think a lot of the a lot of the other YouTube creators probably have some sort of similar backstory that I got mm-hmm. started because I had this windfall or because I had rich parents, honestly, or or whatever it is. And they're kind of able to do that. And I think that that's surprisingly important mm-hmm. to the, cause I've had friends try to do it. They do three videos and they're yeah, like, screw yeah, this. Yeah. I'm getting, totally. It takes up too much work on my weekends. Uh-huh. I got kids. I can't do that. I also think the, it's too understood now what could potentially happen if you succeed, yeah. which then makes the process of trying to succeed more anxiety inducing. Because I remember in 2011, when I started uploading YouTube videos, I met with someone from YouTube. That's actually how I got introduced to YouTube. I thought YouTube was like a random place. You uploaded cat videos and home yeah. videos and, he was like, no, I think he's like, YouTube's moving into this direction where people are making money. And I was like, how much money? He was like, it's kind of undetermined right now, but people are making some money on YouTube. Yeah. And I didn't know how much money you could make on YouTube, Mm -hmm. which I actually think was helpful because I was just like, okay, so I'll just slowly (laughs) grow this thing into like, and so now your point is that now people realize the stakes are higher. The stakes are higher. You're too often falling short of expectations now. Whereas before yeah. there were no well, expectations. Okay, so that's one of my biggest things. I started my channel and then my first hook, right? I had a 2004 Ferrari 360. I bought that car with like 
all of my life savings and then I still had to get like a significant bank loan. But at the time, owning a 2004 Ferrari 360 was like a big deal on YouTube. Right. Because there was no one on you. Now, YouTubers have Bugattis and cars that cost millions of dollars. <laughs> the, the people would laugh at you if you showed up with yeah, a Ferrari. Right. But back at that time, yeah, like the 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 barrier to enter is lower. The stakes were lower. Mm -hmm. You could just kind of do stuff. And no one knew where it could go. There was no like, you know, you can make yeah. millions of dollars it on YouTube. It never occurred it to me. When, when I started doing it, I only started making videos to be a companion piece to the articles I was writing. Right. It was, that was my entire goal was like, hey, I'm writing an article. Why not also have a video that people can watch, you know, a similar topic? And I passed 100,000 subscribers on YouTube without even realizing. I was not even mm. paying attention to my subscriber count right. because I was so focused on being a writer. That mm. was my only goal. Mm. And at some point, about two years in, I realized like, I just showed, I went on YouTube and I was looking at my analytics and I was like, oh my God, like a lot of people are watching these mm. videos. Maybe I should start thinking about video. <laughs> yeah. Did you enjoy the process of making videos when you first started? No, does anyone? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was hell. It was hell. I mean, I had, and I'm not like the most tech forward guy. I like hated it. Um, but like I figured it out, you know, over time and don't write like yeah, yeah, it's yeah, so yeah, hard. Yeah, 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 yeah. So hard. you don't know what you're doing. Now yeah. it's so funny. I pull up, I set up my camera, I'm like shooting, I pull up to a parking lot location, I can I'm shooting in four minutes. But like mm. back then, oh my it, there was stuff like I would shoot something and then I would drive home to like watch it or something. <laughs> <laughs> it took me a whole day to shoot a video, like a four minute video back then. That's you know? so good. Wow. But, and at that time, like when you were shooting, what were you shooting on? Just like a DVD I had camera a stupid camcorder yeah. and I had these microphones that are kind of famous that, that they were like these like plastic clip on Bluetooth microphones. Mm. And they worked because you didn't have to have like a wire or anything. And I yeah. could afford lav mics. And right. so like I had those and everybody is like, go, going mm -hmm. back and watch those videos. Everybody laughs at me about it. Um, but just had like cheap stuff and iMovie, which I used to edit my videos up until a couple years ago. Yeah. Um, yeah your, your aesthetic has not changed yeah. that much. Yeah. No. Simplicity is nice on YouTube. Mm -hmm. I have watched other creators leave YouTube like Motor Trend kind of pieced out of YouTube because they weren't making enough money. And so they put everything behind like a native thing on their own website mm. because they just felt that there wasn't, that was an easier way to monetize it. And they basically abandoned like a three, 4 million subscriber YouTube channel because it just didn't make money for them. Mm. And I've talked to other creators who are just burnt out because they've spent a lot of their effort making really high quality videos. And you like, have to, once you do that, mm. you do that. I like, no and, and I was just at a, at a car launch with another creator who told me like, I wish I hadn't ever committed to making videos so high quality because it's so much work and like, I, it's just too difficult. It's like mm. too hard to do this. I also think people, new people root for you more if yeah. the setup, if the production value is low. I think about, we used to film in our car all the time and still we get comments of people who love <laughs> and miss the car. And miss the car. <laughs> really? And yeah. we've now up-leveled clearly to a point that is nowhere <laughs> near yeah. shooting. Now, nowhere nowhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now we have a million dollar car behind us. I yeah. do think that's exactly right. And I think one of the interesting things about YouTube is it's so democratized in the sense that this is why when you watch Jerry Seinfeld talk about comedy, he says a similar thing, which is like, you go up there, you do your bit. If you're funny, you get laughs, mm. you succeed. If not, you don't. And I feel like that about YouTube to an extent. It's certainly when I started. If your stuff was good, people watched, and then they watched more, and then they watched more. And it like democratized in this crazy way. If I had worked for one of the car magazines as a 22-year-old, I would have been getting coffee for people for the first three years. And then yeah, the next yeah, three years, yeah. they yeah. maybe would give me a Toyota Corolla to drive. Mm -hmm. And then eventually you work your way up. But on YouTube, you can just, if you're good, boom, you're successful pretty quick and you can just start doing it. Mm. And that's a very special aspect of this love, this like the way you create content. I think because of your setup too, you were able to put out more content than other people. If it takes you a month to make a video and yeah. that's when you get feedback, it takes you a long time to change what you're doing and try again. It's like similar to stand up where Jerry mm -hmm. was like, right. you get more feedback more often than right anybody. Away. Yeah. And you put yourself in a position to get more feedback. Yep. I think you know, it's interesting that the, the production value that I have, I've like come and gone on it. When I first started, I was like, I have to do this because it's all I know how and it's all I can afford and it's easy. And then over the like four, three, four years ago, some people started showing up with like really better quality. And I would look at their stuff and be like, I really wish that I could be like them. And in the last six months, talking to some of my creator friends, 
I've like switched back and I yeah. think to myself, I'm actually glad I did this because it's just easy. Yeah. Like I can travel to go film with a backpack and that is my whole thing and a oh. tripod and that is it. And I don't have to worry about anything. And that is so nice and so freeing. And it allows me just a level of flexibility that is crazy, yeah. Yeah. crazy, crazy. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I feel like jealous of the format, both from a like friction perspective of like, literally you said you can travel with a backpack and go do that. You also have a format that's like, I can close my eyes and imagine one of your right. videos, right. which mm -hmm. is really great, right? Like then the expectation is, yep. is there and the bingeability is there. I can, yeah. I'm, mm -hmm. this is what you're gonna get. If I enjoy yep. the experience of watching one of your videos, I'm probably gonna enjoy the other 900, right. which is incredible, <laughs> right? Right, mm -hmm. and if you're into that one, it's like, okay, well, what other cars yeah, do yeah, I wanna yeah, see yeah. the little buttons? Yeah, the other thing though is that one of the most beautiful things of the business of YouTube is if you start with a production expense of near zero and you maintain that. Yeah. And there's exponential growth in yep. revenue. Yep. <laughs> the margin gets astronomical. That's right. Like it is, you know, you keep your production expense here and your revenue goes beyond a television if show. If you can do it. If you can do and, it. And I think one of the things we're starting to see with YouTube it's harder to do that now, yeah. which is mm. sad. Which is Because that was one of the coolest things about YouTube for right. so long, that like you could do it without all that much money and you could succeed. Well, now you get the Mr. Beast, which his videos are incredible, the coolest things in the world, but obviously not rep replicatable by people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, like yeah. You, you couldn't just do that. You can't just pop on YouTube anymore and just do. No. So mm -hmm. when I talk about the democratization of content, I'm really more thinking about like maybe a, an era that is kind of gone. I think we might be swinging back though, because I, I find myself craving yeah, more You know, just that's one of the real. things I've always felt about YouTube. I've always felt one of the reasons I was successful is you're not seeing this polished content of this guy. You're not really yep. sure if you can trust, mm, you mm. know, because uh, he's, he's, everything's music and did yeah. they pay for this and how did all this work? Yeah. You see me, there's no question about it. This is a dude. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is just a guy. Yeah. This could be my name. Yeah. 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 This may be his first video. <laughs> <laughs> there is no doubt to anybody of what's going on. And I think that that... That like rela relatability and also just like truth. And that's one of the reasons why I've never really done like ad integrations until mm. I started Cars and Bits, which I still feel isn't really an ad integration the same way because it's no, literally it's yours. mine. Yeah, it's yeah. Yours. And so like, I've, but I never really pushed. And I always felt like I don't want to push t-shirts. I don't want to push video game companies that I don't believe in. I really want to like cr maintain this honesty. Mm. And I think that's one of my, the reasons that my channel has had such a long tail, which is that like, we know we can trust this dude. He's yeah. just like <laughs> doing this and yeah. saying yeah. stuff. And he's like a guy. And yeah. I, I really think that that's important. Now, the drawback to that is like every um, the relatability, like people have no problem interrupting me at restaurants or it's like, hey, John. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Parasocial yeah. relationship is strong because you're neighbor dog. Yeah. Yeah. Your like, neighbor dog. Yeah. 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 It's, yeah. like, it's yeah. like wild. <laughs> Colin and I used to work with um, athletes on their YouTube channels. And we used to think about there's two ways you can go with an athlete. You can either um, sensationalize them and be like, they are LeBron James. They're, you know, superhuman, yeah. right? or you can fully humanize them. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's starting to happen on YouTube now too, where the sensationalism is going, you know, no one's like Mr. Beast. No one's pulling stuff off like him. Right. And there's people going in that direction where it's like, you can't do this. Right. You just can't. Right. And then there's the radically human, which is like you. And even with, you know, Mark Marquez to talk about him again, like starting his autofocus channel, it's incredibly human for a guy who also does sensational things. He has a quarter million dollar robot in his right. uh, office that does like crazy tech shots. That I, I, everybody's got their own thing. And some people have made it work like Mr. Yeah. Beast and many other people doing yeah. high quality, high production stuff. But I, I've really felt like the, the next door person next door aspect is kind of what I like crave about YouTube. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, I think that's the coolest part. If I wanted to watch super high quality, slick production stuff, I'd watch TV and people come up to me and they say, I'm going to make a car channel that has 4k drones and all this mm -hmm. music. And it's yeah, going to yeah. be the best high quality car videos on YouTube. And I'm thinking, a, it's going to be expensive. You're not gonna make money and be like, I don't know that that's what the audience is really looking for. Right. They mm -hmm. say they are, right. but when you actually look at the views of the videos where people do that versus my views, mm -hmm. Uh, and, even if, story. and even if the audience wants it for a little bit, if they stop wanting it, you're stuck. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's you're stuck. You get back to the problem we exactly. mentioned earlier, where you're yeah. like, you're "Those stuck. are your videos. That's what you're making. And, and you can't, you can't go from that to what I do." Right. And <laughs> people you, be you, like, "What?" I think the <laughs> average this? creator should prepare for the ups and downs of, you know, like the the career. Right. It's it's up and down. You're it's it's also you as a human on camera. Like you could yeah. also 
fall out of love with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like that you have to prepare for that. Did you have any moments like that? Because I I put myself in your shoes just in the fact that you're a soul solo creator. But I think Samir and I always say this. I don't know if I would do this career if I wasn't doing it with Samir and with team and with people around me. Really? But you're doing it by yourself. Was that ever something that was Um, difficult for you? Believe it or not, no. I think I just love poking around cars. (laughs) (laughs) Like it's insane. But like to this day, I show up at a at a shoot in a quiet parking lot early in the morning with my backpack (laughs) and nothing else. And I like am pumped. I'm like so Mm. into it. And I've done a thousand of these videos. And I'm like, wow, that button does that. I'm like, I gotta show that. And I like to this day, there's never been a time, truly never. Occasionally scheduling can get, in the summer I like go away and I don't really shoot. And um, so I, in the spring it's like hell Mm -hmm. and I shoot a lot. And there are times when I get a little burnt out there, but that's purely because I'm stacking Mm -hmm. them. It's not because I don't actually enjoy it. And the fall comes and I go back to it and I'm like, yeah, I still love this. And you shoot by yourself, you edit it by yourself. I think there's some, there might be something to that too. I, I enjoy working by myself and I think you add people and it adds like, Friction. There's complication. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You add a you add a someone else's schedule. They're having a baby. They're getting married. They got a girlfriend who wants to move to North Carolina. Sure. You know, all, I add all this <laughs> stuff, yeah. Yeah. right? And it's like I don't have to deal with any of that. It's yeah. like I'm I mm-hmm. wake up, go shoot. Boom. Yeah, yeah. That's, and I think also like if you're ex, if you didn't put out like if you show up and there's a car you're excited about. And you're there and you poke around it and you film on your iPhone, I think now, right? Mostly. Mostly yeah. on your iPhone. I have a 4K camcorder for the shots that you can, mm-hmm. that I'm in. Yeah. And then the rest is on the iPhone. And if you didn't put out that YouTube video, you would still be pumped, right? Yeah. And so the car, the cars where the answer is no are the ones that I shoot if I, if you, that, okay, that I got because it. I yeah. have to. Yeah. And yeah, I yeah. often think about, it's funny because I often think about like, what if I were to sell, you know, what if I, what if I suddenly had a hundred million dollars? What would I do? And the answer is probably the same right. thing mm-hmm. that I do now, actually. I'm curious about your relationship with money, like growing up and then also, you know, coming into starting a YouTube channel, which obviously then turned into a, a positive financial outcome. Like what right. was that journey with revenue and like recognizing like, okay, I'm writing and I'm making these videos. Wait, I have a hundred thousand subscribers. Like when did revenue from YouTube videos come into play? So that's an interesting question. So when I worked at Porsche, I was just making, I was earning $48,000 a year. That was my yeah. salary. Um, and it's funny, that number was when I first started YouTube in my head, I said, if I can make $48,000 a year, then I've made it, on, I've made it on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Um, took a while. Yeah, it took a very long time. <laughs> for, me, yeah. for me too, for me yeah, too yeah. honestly. I didn't make that much again on YouTube for three and a half years probably. But that's because I wasn't really taking it sure. seriously. The writing yeah. was my focus. So so I started earning, um, I, then, I was, then I was writing on the side and I, started, I was actually earning more writing than, than with my day job. Um, the YouTube thing didn't really take off until, the, until late 2016. So what happened was I left auto, I left Jalopnik to write a car enthusiast car blog for autotrader.com. And at the same time, I started making two videos a week. And just by chance, we chose to launch this thing in September, which meant that like the fall was coming and the ad rates tend to be higher around the holidays. Christmas came and Christmas came <laughs> in the Doug yeah. household. Yeah. And I made a lot of money that month, that, that December. And it was like, oh my God. I, what was a lot of money? Yeah, I think it was t- like $18,000 that oh month. Yeah. Now you got to th- remember like for me, I mean, that was like, I, I, I never thought you could make that much money right. doing any, anything, but like YouTube. And so then January came and I made half that. And I was like, oh, I guess it was a flu. Yeah, I didn't yeah, know. Yeah, I, was, yeah. I, and I didn't have anybody. I didn't know anybody who's doing right. YouTube. And I didn't realize that ad rates fluctuated like that. Yeah. That was like a thing. But um, it wasn't kind of until then that it became enough to like, hey, I can make this, make a career out of this. Yeah. Mm. And I can like really do this. Because even half of that is more than $48,000 a year. If that yeah. Right. Right. It was crazy. Yeah. I couldn't, and I couldn't believe like, really? This is a yeah. thing you can do and make that? It's was like blown away. Um, and then it just kind of grew from there. But I think doing, switching to two videos a week at that time was a, was a surprisingly mm. impactful decision. Mm. Especially because probably you were building out a deeper library yeah. That mm-hmm. if one hit, right. then people could watch. And soon Tom. after that, I also switched to doing the car reviews. In the past, I had done videos of my own cars, but doing car reviews that were new cars people could buy, that's a whole different thing. That gets you a wider audience at the end of the day because mm-hmm. 
there are, people are Googling that. People are like, hey, what is, what is, yeah. the t- you know, what do people think about this car? Yeah. As opposed to like, hey, I drove my Aston Martin, you know, in the snow. That's a funny video, but you're only going to appeal to your audience. For you, as the channel was picking up two videos a week, did you get really connected to the numbers on the screen, whether it was the viewership of videos, the AdSense number going up? Like, it's a bit of an intoxicating thing as a YouTube creator when it finally hits. Yeah. And you're like, wait, this is working. Yeah. These oh. numbers are going up. Mm-hmm. These numbers are going up. Like, yeah, no, I was obsessive. I have okay. spreadsheets on top of spreadsheets on top of spreadsheets oh, paying wow. attention to, you know, I would look at everything. First hour, first five hours for like, okay. all, all sorts of crazy stuff. And I've often said that one of the reasons that I've become so successful is because my colleagues were kind of insane. All my other car YouTuber colleagues are just insane people who just blow up cars. And I was like, if I could just be, bring like an analytical approach to this, that will be a, a, a mm-hmm. differentiator. And so I would look at videos and yeah, if they were performing worse, don't do a video like that again. Don't do a video on a car like that again. Mm-hmm. And it really helped me kind of like hone, mm-hmm. okay, this is the type of thing that I want to shoot. And I think I did that in a way that a lot of other creators at that time weren't really doing. Interesting. Like really paying attention to the exact, okay, what was it about this video that didn't do well? Where does, where does the hook need to be? Where was it this type of car? Was it this age of car? And I think that really, really, mm. really had a huge effect in making the videos blow up. Is there anything you learned about the very beginning of a video of what makes it potentially you know, succeed? The, the first little bit has never been as important to me as, as I, I hear a lot of creators tell mm. me. Mm. I think people are kind of in my videos for maybe a little bit more um, of an in-depth tour and they don't, they don't necessarily quite need that hook as much as I hear from some other was people. It in, was it intentional that you don't drive the car until the very end? Yeah. That that's the payoff? I, you know, it's, it's, it's the opposite. Everyone else drives the car. I've actually counseled people who come to me for advice and I said, just don't drive the car at all. <laughs> like, people don't care about that as much as you think. And especially that's yeah. becoming true in the electric car era where a lot of them drive pretty similarly. People care about the tour of the car where you're going to, sp- most people are not, most dri- human beings driving cars are not really sophisticated enough to understand the differences that some of these car reviewers swear they can feel, you know, mm-hmm. going around certain corners. Yeah. I don't buy into that. I, I put the, the quirks and features at the start because honestly, that's that's what people it's come human. to my yeah. videos for. And there are some videos where it's a high performance car and a driver who's very famous for that. And those videos focus more on driving. And I think mm-hmm. that if people tell me, you need to drive more, you're a terrible driver, you're, you don't drive, drive enough. I'm like, go watch, Chris Harris is the guy. Go watch his videos. He's the guy who does all the driving. Mm. He'll give you that info. I'll give you different info. I think both of our videos can mm. coexist. They're both useful. Mm. Yeah, that's, uh, it's, it's really good. It's like, what is the human part of this? You right. know, like the human experience is getting in the car and turning on the AC and right. turning I up mean, the music. I mean, you're telling me yeah. this, right? Mm-hmm. Like the AC and Bluetooth yeah. is what mm-hmm. you want. Like, aren't you, when you're, say you're my audience, and I think in some sense you are, especially if you're trying to buy a car, what are you interested in? It's not like, oh, the steering feel around this corner. Sure, yeah. yeah. You're interested in like, how does the tech work? Is it good? What, what features can I show a friend? What features can that, I show a really friend? That's really what it comes down to is like, I remember I got a car in high school that my parents gave me that had, um, seat heaters. Yeah. Every person, huge, huge. Mm-hmm. huge. People come in my car. I'd be like, dude, are right. you ready for this? Mm-hmm. I also it's like a that's, jacuzzi that's, in a car, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> believe it or not. And our backs would just be sweating, <laughs> you know, just like perfusely. Be like, this is so really? cool. Yeah. Yeah. This is so great. I went to school in the Valley. It's just like, super hot. <laughs> 95 degrees. It's even warmer <laughs> in here. And all of these cars are telling a story about like the identity that someone may want. Yeah. Right. I, I've gotten hooked lately on the Subaru Outback Wilderness because okay. potentially I see myself as it's someone right. who will spend some time in the wilderness. Don't you find that car a little weird looking? Well, you called it weird. <laughs> you said that the edges were weird and that it was too muscular with the plastic so on the outside. Kind of like you. It's a little too okay. muscular, yeah, I guess, well, right? You know, yeah. Someone down the block bought one of those like last week yeah. and I'm like, time enough to see this thing. So like, I, <laughs> I, always, I always want a car and then I'll go watch your video and I'll go, eh, Okay, <laughs> Doug thinks this is a little weird. I don't know if, I, if I'm that guy anymore. You know, it's actually interesting because for years doing this, the automakers didn't take it seriously. I was kind of the first to really do like new car reviews in a grand scale on YouTube. Mm-hmm. And um, the automakers wouldn't invite me to stuff. They wouldn't send me cars. I had to go to dealers for, or private owners for basically everything. Mm-hmm. And over time, they started to realize that there are people like you out there who are like, 
it became a thing where it was like, all of your customers are using YouTube to to like, they're not reading the magazine right, anymore. Right. You got to get with this. And I was at a press launch the other day um, and a guy came up to me and said, I'm a big fan of yours. I'm, I'm a TikToker. And I'm like, the TikTokers are getting invited to these things. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap. I, do you know how hard I had to work to get these inv- invitations? It's kind of funny. When we when we were working in sports media, I remember someone said this to me as, as we were starting to like bring sports media to YouTube. I remember someone said to me that during the Sports Illustrated era, like, someone pitched Sports Illustrated on a TV channel and they were like, why would we ever do that? People like reading. And then ESPN came about, right? And like from ESPN, then I'm sure ESPN also was sitting as they had established their thing and they were like, why would we turn these into short clips on right. and highlights on Instagram? Like right. these are rights deals that, you know, why like it doesn't make mm-hmm. DVDs in the mail to people. They come right. Yeah. Yeah. I remember thinking that was and the craziest idea. Every <laughs> step of the way, it's kind of like, you know, okay, wait, no, people want to see the car for five minutes. Why would they yeah. only want to see it for 60 seconds? Right. You know, and you're kind of like disrupting constant, yeah. mm-hmm. like you, your videos disrupted the car review industry because people were writing. Auto Trader was writing. And all those guys hated it. I mean, every car reviewer hated, sure. hated the fact that there's a guy on YouTube and now many guys on YouTube who've like come and, of course. and you know what? I'm hearing the same stuff from my YouTube colleagues about TikTok now. Right, it's going to disrupt again. Their yeah. videos are so short. There's not even a thing. I'm right. like, I'm like, this was us. Yeah, and, it, and we're not talking about 20 years ago. It's like us, like four years yeah. ago. Right, right. Yeah, it's happening way quicker. Um, one thing I wanted to acknowledge too is like your thumbnails. Thumbnails bring me more anxiety than anything else in, <laughs> in the world, probably right now. But your thumbnails are like so incredibly beautifully lo-fi and focused on the car. The car, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's the car, right? Yeah. Which then shows you that the intention of the click is the car. The car, Which right. is so fantastic because then when you click through, immediately you get this, you know, voice yeah. of Doug, which is mm-hmm. quirky and interesting and like unexpected because I clicked on a $2 million car and if it's my entry point into your world, I click on it immediately. I'm like, who's that guy <laughs> in the back, you right. know, behind yeah, this in the back with the three like, million dollar yeah, Bugatti? That was a <laughs> conscious decision that nobody was doing at the time. But right. I thought the main reason I started doing it, truthfully, I've never mentioned this before, but truthfully, it's because I was like, oh, I always wear shorts. I hate wearing pants. And I was embarrassed <laughs> that I was wearing <laughs> And I was like, if I stand so behind the car, but it became clear quickly that like, this is the, the car is the yeah. whole point of this. That's so funny that it was about shorts. Cause I was <laughs> looking at it and I was like, wow, Doug, it was brilliant yeah, idea. I was like, it was incredibly it strategic. I, I was going to bring up, I was like visual prioritization. It goes car, <laughs> then Doug, but it's actually in just, you were right. You didn't want to show your yeah. legs. <laughs> Eventually it was like, okay, he wears shorts. Yeah. And I could have come out in front, but yeah. I realized like, he's I'm a shorts guy. The, thing. the car is what people want to yeah. click on. Yeah. And like, that should be the star mm. of this. We, and the thumbnails are ridiculously low fi So good though. But, they work. I don't yeah. know. I don't have giant but, text. But then the expectation is mad. I click and yeah. it's, it's exactly yeah. what I clicked That's on. That's always been another yeah. thing that I've been really laser focused on my entire YouTube career is just like, give them as much as you can. I never, ever, ever want to provide any sort of clickbait stuff. And so like my view is you're going to see a 24 minute tour of this car right. and you're going to see everything mm-hmm. that's important. And that is that. And I'm going to talk fast for 24 minutes. Yeah, here's yeah. this, here's this, here's this, here's this. And that's just how it's going to be. Mm. And you know, yeah, the expectation as opposed to trying to bait people. In. Yeah. And I've watched some of those channels that do that kind of take a nosedive of because course. people after the eighth, 10th, 12th, well, become time, numb to it. Yeah. Yeah. You become they numb know to fake. it. Yeah. You, I got and it. They have it's, to write not clickbait. On the yeah. Time. Yeah. Right. Back to the financial side of it. Um, our car see- is like a car buyer has high purchase intent. Like if someone's watching a review, I think the assumption is like they can spend a lot of money. Yeah. $50,000, you know, like these are, these are big purchases. Do the CPMs match that? Yeah. They yeah. do. Mm. CPMs are always higher. And I think that's the reason. And, and that was one of the things that I eventually was able to convince the automakers are. On. I, I was like, I was like, dude, they're like, oh, YouTube's for kids. I mean, I would get emails from PR companies, from PR departments at automakers saying, YouTube's for kids. We don't want to go on YouTube. And I'd be like, I got 2 million views on the RAV4. <laughs> they weren't like- I had that car. There wasn't like a 17-year-old <laughs> going, oh, I wonder what the RAV4 is doing. Like, <laughs> yeah. These are mm-hmm. in market yeah. shoppers. Like the Kia yeah. Telluride I got four, or the 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 um, hun- the Hyundai Palace and the Kia Telluride I got 4 million views. That wasn't like, a, those are moms. Yeah. These yeah. are moms watching mm-hmm. those videos. It's not a nine-year-old going from right. like a blippy video to like, <laughs> yeah. okay, let's watch 
wants the RAV4 review now. But yeah. even your titles sometimes will be like, this minivan is a mom's dream or something. It's <laughs> right? not like you're trying to get it past no. anybody. And so, yes, the result, the benefit of that is that um, they are true in-market shoppers. And so, yeah, a lot of them are kind of... Now, sometimes on the videos, Lamborghinis, they actually see people would drop lower, yeah. because it was kids. Well, yeah, but, it probably know, goes too mass at that point. Yeah. The thing is, the more niche it can be, the more like you yeah. actually are targeting the potential buyer of right. it. The yeah. higher now I'm literally targeting... Yeah. With, with, now that I'm reviewing it for the site, for, right. I'm literally targeting an individual potential right, buyer. Right, right. Mm -hmm. But you're, you're able to doubly monetize. So what, what do some of those car CPMs look like? You know... That's an interesting question. I measure, <laughs> I have like, a, I, I never understood why CPM is measured in dollars per thousand. Yeah, yeah. It never made sense to me. So I, I have a, like my own measurement. <laughs> What's that? Formula. It's like, how many um, views do I have to get to make a dollar? That's how I measured it. Okay. And, yeah. But but I'll tell you the answer to, to on a general level, good videos would make 15 or $20,000 individually. Got it. And that helped me justify, you know, traveling. Or course, whatever. And yeah. I have always made, had a big thing about how I don't take money from the automaker. So a lot of my colleagues, all of them, um, you know, the automaker is doing a press launch. They, the automaker pays to fly them there mm. and then puts them up in a hotel. I don't do any of that. I, I fly myself there. I put myself up in a hotel. And I've always kind of taken a holier than thou position about this. <laughs> um, but the truth is that I've been allowed to do that because some of these videos, you could, you could just easily justify it because they yeah, make enough money. So obviously this varies, but how much how many views does it take to make a dollar? Uh, it it varies an, to a level that is like almost impossible to scrap. It's the mm. same fluctuations you see in CPM, yep. but it is based on um, time of year, type of car, yeah. mm -hmm. type of person, how long the video is, how long an average they're watching. It's like wild. The, the numbers can be 300% off. Wow. Mm. Um, is there the, a low and a high you could the tell The good us? ones, if I remember correctly now, the good ones were um, like under... Okay, I don't remember. I'm trying to think. If the good ones were under like a hundred dollars, a hundred views would make a dollar. The really good ones. Wow, hundred views would make a dollar. Yeah. That's wow. really good. Yeah, and so that was like Christmas time with a right. great car. And I always used to do um, Doug Sember, where I would actually save up the really good cars yeah. for mm. Christmas Smart. time to yeah. really milk the hell out of them. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Which I still, I actually still did last year. I'm not sure if I'll be able to do it again. It's enormous amount of work to like. Get all these great, mm -hmm. and, and you kind of end up sandbagging October, November too, because sure, you take yeah. all the good mm -hmm. stuff. And, yeah, but it really made a lot of money for a long time. <laughs> so I feel like now you're pretty set in your belief system for the format that why you do it, how long it'll be, putting it on YouTube. But like you said, uh, like TikTokers are showing up at some yeah. of these events; they are finding viewership. And now that you have cars and bids, yeah, do you think about yeah oh, converting yeah. So, to TikTok and 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 shorts and making sure that totally. people can find you that you way? You can't not. Yeah. The, at the end of the day, the greatest thing there were a lot of great things this investment brought me, including Career GT. Um, <laughs> but I actually think the greatest is like the ability to be a little more creative. Like my whole cars and bids had been doing well, but obviously we were taking money that we were making and putting it back into the business to try to grow it further. So I had I hadn't seen people like Doug. Doug makes five percent on every car they sell. Well, no, we had employees, and I, yeah, yeah, I literally not, did not yeah. see a dime from cars and bids until we sold um, until we took the investment. But. Um, the greatest thing that it's given me is I can finally like be free. <laughs> like this, there's this feeling of freedom that I haven't had on YouTube in like forever. And so, yeah, I'm going to try it. We're already starting to try TikTok and shorts and mm -hmm. let's screw around mm -hmm. because the individual revenue doesn't quite matter as much anymore. In the past, it was my entire income. Yep. Yeah. And now it's like, hmm, you know, cool. so what wait, can wait, we do? Wait, yeah. When did you go <laughs> from, it's just me and you know, I'm going to hire my best friend, Melissa, to check my email. Right, right. To, I'm comfortable building a business, cars and bids. Like, I don't, I don't know. I, I, it was, okay, here's what happened. I met this guy named Blake and um, he, had, he had sent me a random email. He was one of the people. Melissa sent me the email and said, hey, you might want to meet this guy. And I used to meet viewers for dinner Tw three times a week. <laughs> really? <laughs> really? Yeah. I was, I, especially when I, because when I started my channel, I was in Atlanta, yeah. where I still wish I lived. And then I moved to Philly, where I'm glad I don't live anymore. <laughs> and what happened was I didn't know anybody. So people would be like, hey, I'm in Philly. You want to get dinner? I'd be like, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I would meet straight up. And this time I met some of my best friends. In fact, our director of operations for Cars and Bids is also one of my closest friends. Met him that way. No people, way. There was a guy mm. at my wedding who I met that way. Wow. Um, so, so Blake sends, this guy Blake sends me an email and he's like, hey, um, 
I like, we have a dog. We both have dogs. We both live in San Diego. Sure. Let's hang out. So I was like, all right. And he said he had an M2 competition, which now I like in recent years, I would kind of filter by cars. Like if they're kind of, you know, I'll, I'll go see a guy with an M2 competition. That's a nice car. So, um, we met and like he did something with computers. I don't know anything about any of that. I was like, all right, we hung out. It was a good time. And then a couple months later, I started really feeling, I, I was always feeling I have to do something, but I was like, I really think this like auction set idea is a good one. So I called up Blake. I was like, I have an, I have an idea. Mm. And when you do things on the internet as a job, everybody comes to you. I have an idea. Yeah. And mm-hmm. then universally, those ideas are the worst ideas you've ever heard. <laughs> life right so he was like all right i'll have dinner so we did it and i was like i think we should we should create this auction website and initially it was a little difficult we needed some funding and there were some questions about who would own what percentage and i was like screw this i'm gonna learn to code (laughs) now what and i'm gonna make it myself and blake was like no, you're not. That's, that's <laughs> yeah. the stupidest thing ever. Because, but I had spent, I was like, I started a YouTube channel myself and brought that to this level. I can do anything. Yeah. And thankfully, I had a great partner in this guy, Blake. And he like talked me out of that. And we settled all the numbers and yeah. agreements. And he had like actual people who have done this as a career. <laughs> and that was, that was kind of how it happened. And, and I was lucky enough to meet somebody who knew what I didn't about what we needed to actually create mm. this business. I had the audience and I had the knowledge that I thought the business would work, the understanding of the car market and the mm-hmm. marketplace market and how that would that would go. And he had the knowledge of like how a business runs and how a website is built. And it was the perfect marriage. Did you have a clear understanding that, or how did you have a clear understanding that your audience was willing to purchase cars, you know, like not just look at them or purchase them from you. I assumed because the videos that I would do about in mark cars in market, you know, Kia Tellurides and such would get big views. So I kind of figured mm. there were a lot of people mm. out there who were watching me and who had money to buy a car. Yeah. But like the, 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 the true answer to that question is I didn't, I, I just hoped yeah. which is a terrible way to start a business in, in my mind. Like you should have a business plan and a good sense mm-hmm. of, okay, this business makes X amount of money. And so my business, if I do this, could do this. But I was just like, I think this will work. And somehow we convinced someone to fund us and it did work. Um, did you feel a level of, of stress or anxiety going from, again, like you're probably making a good amount of money right. on YouTube, right? Like you, financially, I'm going to make an assumption, but you were okay. Oh yeah. I mean, I, and this is the conversation I'm having with all my friends who are on YouTube right now. Yeah. I'm telling them you need to get to, to take your audience and do something like what I did. Take them somewhere that you can control. And they're sitting here like I'm making seven figures. Yeah. I'm busy. That that's was the, that's yeah. the big thing. That's a big thing. It's thing. like, what do you mean? I need to start a business. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah, I, I have a business, business yeah, right now. Yeah. 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 I, I can't, I don't have time to brush my teeth. And, and, and yes, I mean, there was a year where it was tough, really. Yeah. It, there were, and then when we launched the business, it was still tough, but like, there was a year where it was like, I'm doing this thing. Why have I done this? Like, I yeah. don't need yeah. to do this, but this isn't gonna last forever. And I, I beg people that my, my fellow YouTubers to understand that, like the audience will, no matter how hot you think you are right now, the audience will get tired of you. You will wish that you had done this. And I don't think you want to be sitting there in five years when your videos are getting a quarter of the views they are saying, damn, I wish I had tried something. And so, yeah, I mean, that was the hardest part of the whole thing was like balancing both. And again, I had an amazing partner who was enormously effective at being able to kind of do all that while I continued to do what I had to do. And we both understood the value of what I had to do. And that he Mm -hmm. could take over and do a lot of this because I wasn't there a lot, but I was still cultivating my audience. You're the top of the funnel. I think what's great also is that your production wasn't so intense. Like when you talk about YouTube creators not having time to brush their teeth, a lot of times it's because their videos are so hard to make. Yeah. And having videos that are easy to make, that unlocks the entire thing. Yeah. Right? Like, the, and I'm not saying it's super easy. You still no, have to travel, right. but mm-hmm. like it's, you could sit on a plane and probably edit one of your videos right. and it's done by the time you land. That's exactly mm-hmm. right. You had more time. Yeah. And so that was an enormously important component yeah. of it. And so maybe I, I kind of over, when I'm, when I'm heavy handedly telling my YouTube friends to do this, maybe sure. I'm not you know, really giving them their deference that they probably are, it's taking more of their time than it was for me. But like, I still feel that way. It comes back to the start of just like, when you're starting the channel, start with very low friction. Like Mm -hmm. don't start over here. Do you think 
that that is a way to start a channel now. Like, do you think, in, it, this is something that I really, that really hits me a lot when I look at the car space now. When I started, there weren't many. And now there are so many that I yeah. sit there and think to myself, if you did start low friction, would you even succeed? And I think to myself, probably not. Now, there are a couple of guys who did. There's a guy named Radies Rides, and he's in Florida, and he just like, his wife is his cameraman, and they just like show up and do a quick video, and that's that. Um, and they, he's been able to succeed and I've met him and he's the coolest dude in the world. And I'm thrilled that someone else has been able to like, kind of take the yeah. low five format and do it, but it's harder. It's I way harder. I think you now. can succeed, but success may come in three to four to five years. Yeah. And it might look different. And it might look, very it might look different. different. And is it on TikTok? Yeah. yeah. And yeah. if it is, there's no money there, except if you do the, um, yeah, the ad integrations, which adds a whole other layer of, yeah. is that something you want to go into? And was that something that were, those were offered to you? Oh yeah. And were they like, like how much money did you turn down? I mean, I occasionally would do them and it was crazy numbers. Yeah. It was, it was tens of thousands of dollars for a minute. You know? Right. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I did maybe four or five ever, maybe six, but I always felt that that was cheap, easy money up front. Yeah. But if I stayed true to myself and didn't do any of that, then my like believability mm. would end up benefiting me longer mm. term. Yeah. That's what I, like I always that. thought. I was like, I could take 30 grand today but I think I'll make more than 30 grand in three years if I just do not look like somebody who's getting paid, mm. Yeah, you know? And I, th I, I think that was the right decision. Even looking yeah. back on it, there was money I definitely left on the table. I think it was the right decision. It's easy to say that sitting here with a career GT. I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> no, but you have to have a relationship also with like why you want money. Yeah. You know, like at that time, if you were like, this is more money than I, this is more than $48,000. This is more than I anticipated. <laughs> right. Right. It's, it's that if you get into a world of like, there, there's been times in my career where I, I've looked at the numbers on the screen and I'm just like, how high can these go? Right. Not like no, no relationship to like, that's enough. I'm fine. Right. More like, I wonder how high this can go. Yeah. And when you get into that game, it gets, I think it gets a little dangerous because you're willing to trade a lot to watch that number go up. Yeah. But if you get to a point where you can mature enough to say like, I'm not willing to trade certain things. I'm not willing to trade my believability. Right. I'm not willing to trade my authenticity. I'm not willing to trade this minute of my content. Right. You know, if you, if you start becoming really unwilling to trade that time or those right. things, you actually build a long lasting, like why has your brand lasted from since 2013? Right. Like it's, th there's a reason to that. Right. I'm not one of these guys who just wants to do this like, just milk it for all the money forever. I see some of these guys who have 20, 30 million and still go after another win. And I'm like, just chill. Yeah. Mm. Just end it, you know? And I always wanted to like be able to have a big enough income and to be able to make this go long enough that I like had like, I was able to build like wealth and have a good life, you know? But I never thought about, um, I just want to make it crazy and just do insane stuff and just absolutely blow it out of the water. That was like never really an enormous yeah. thought in my mind. It was just like, if I could do this forever, then I'm happy. You know? Have you managed to find a dynamic and a role within cars and bids that is still comfortable or is it a stressful thing to be running these two businesses it's, or, it's, or involved it, in both? You know, it's an interesting thing when you, when you found a business and then, and then like give up majority, you're not, it's your business. Yeah. Yeah. But not really. Right? Yeah. And that's been a little weird, but like also so welcome. So <laughs> we launched Cars and Bids in June of 20. I had a baby in the summer of 21. Did Cars and Bids work right away? Yeah, we were profitable almost right away. Wow, that's what crazy. Did that feel like? Yeah, um, I didn't realize how special it was until people later told me. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So I, it you were felt, like, yeah, obviously, yeah, yeah, obviously we're profitable. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like that's, that's what you yeah. do. Yeah. What, what yeah. else were yeah. you gonna do? Yeah. But like, um, what, what did that mean that it worked? Like your first auction went live? Well, and that, the, the thing to me, the thing that meant that it worked yeah. was yes, that like it, the site didn't have problems yeah. and that it literally worked. Like cars were selling. Mm -hmm. And I, I still remember, like there are still moments that I, the very first car we auctioned was mine. Um, and watching those bids come in at the yeah. end, it was like, this is happening. And then the second car was a buddy of mine. His name is Perry. And we sold this Porsche and it, it um, had a reserve on it. My car didn't and watching the bids come in and then watching it clear reserve. Mm. We were sitting out here on my patio and we like, oh, we were like cheering. Like, yeah, the, you yeah. know, like, like the, your favorite team had just won the Super Bowl. Like, oh my God, this actually happened. And it was like that the next day too. And then the third day. And then eventually I had to like go back out and film. And then we didn't meet on my patio every single day like we had for weeks. And, and that watching the site just hmm. sort of mature into like a business that mm. 
worked um, was big. Also getting a lot of submissions. That was key because we yeah. knew we needed cars to come in for us to sell. And we had this, we had this brilliant idea the day we launched to offer everybody a thousand dollars. The first 50 cars that got on the site to sell, we gave them a thousand bucks. Smart. So fifty thousand dollars spent. And it was everything. We got a thousand submissions that day. I mean, that's wow. crazy. We yeah. still to this day have never gotten as many submissions as we did yeah. on the first day. <laughs> But that's like that's like smart under like understanding of just how to move people on the internet. Yeah. And I think that's probably what a lot of businesses who launch, you know, they don't they don't have a deep understanding of how people interact with the internet. I think that's yeah. exactly right. The other big one that I often see people screwing up, I'm gonna. I'm gonna do this. Mm. We didn't announce anything until it was live. Uh, it, we turned uh, it on and then that. we turned on my video. I and then that. you could go there. It wasn't like oh, in six months, Doug's gonna launch this. Yeah. yeah. You could go there that day and bid on a car mm. or submit your car for sale. And so the first day you crucial, the first day you talked about it was you the, didn't say like, I'm going to launch a car auction. Didn't list. say a thing to anybody mm. at any time. Like we that. just announced it and it was already mm. live. And that's the way uh, from what I've learned on the internet, that's the way you do it. Cause I've watched all these car that's launches. Good. These car companies all screw this up. They announce a car, the 2020 Toyota Tundra. They announce it in the spring of 2018. By the time it actually shows up, mm. Nobody cares anymore. If they were smart, honestly, they would they would announce it and it would kind of like be on trucks to dealers at I that moment. I think you're totally right. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, think, I think they live in a, an, a world, an old world where you you need lead time and mm -hmm. magazines cover it and people wait at their dealers and and that kind of yeah. thing. And it's not, that's not how uh, I think I, it works on the internet. I got really excited about a Volkswagen electric car. And then I realized that they were still being built in Tennessee and I couldn't even, <laughs> you couldn't even get it. Yeah. Like yeah. it was not even something I could buy. And then yeah. I just forgot about it and I moved on to the right. Subaru and wilderness. Then, and then by <laughs> and who knows where I'll go next. <laughs> what do you drive now? I have a Volkswagen Taos. So I still went with the Volkswagen. Okay. Yeah. Got it. So we move on from the Taos to the wilderness. That's yeah. Fun. Yeah. Got yeah. It. Got it. <laughs> that was reasonable. Yeah, thanks. I actually like the Outback Wilderness. Okay. It's just there's a lot of why do all those. What about the Taos? So the Taos is uh, it's fine. It's transportation. It's yeah. fine. That's <laughs> how I feel about it, and that's why I've gotten into the wilderness because I'm like with well, the Taos, it's just it's yeah, fine. The, 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 that would be a good upgrade. For exactly. Sure, the, the wilderness would be like cooler and more exciting. Uh, no question about that. Yeah, the Taos is just so regular. It's just right. Uh, it's tra it's tra yeah. Uh. <laughs> I don't care about cars, so I don't know what we're talking about. But honestly, the, yeah. there's nothing wrong with that either, by the way. So many people, you know, there's nothing wrong with I, yeah, I, yeah. I have a lot of my friends don't like cars and I think one or at least don't care. And I think one of the great things about life sometimes is that you can kind of disconnect from this world that we live totally. in. Yeah. yeah. And like be around people and talk about. Oh, it's my favorite to talk to my high school friends who don't watch any YouTube. Yeah. It's yeah. fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Talk they have no idea what I'm talking about. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So with, with cars and bids being profitable? When did you start hiring people? What did you think? Did you think like an exit was something that you were going yes, towards? but not this soon. You know, actually we got emails all the time from VC, PE, all this stuff, you know, can we invest? And we just ignored them. We just straight up didn't reply mm. <laughs> because the business was so early stage at that point that we knew if we can hold out for a few years, we can grow this to a point where it's really worth something, yeah. especially because of the trajectory we saw. It, it, launching in the summer of 20, we really, really thought it was going to fail um, because of COVID. And of course, it turned out that different stuff happened to the car market than anybody could have predicted, and it actually took off. And that really spurred us to believe like, we can like this is a this is a business and uh, i hadn't an exit i hadn't really that wasn't really on our minds our, uh, of course you think about it when you start a business but the only yeah. thing on our minds truthfully or at least mine i don't know about blake's but it's what he told me is like we want to build the best business we can mm -hmm. we just want to build a great business and that stuff can be figured out later and as it turned out, later was sooner than we thought. The, yeah. the, the company that invested in us, the churning group, kind of specializes in these like creator-led yep. businesses. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so I wasn't really considering an exit. Part of the reason was I didn't want to have to explain to whatever BS company showed up how this all works. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't want to be like, look, here's YouTube. They're gonna, you know, because what company would come in and say, you got this product, forget about the YouTube, this is stupid, we're gonna, we're gonna do this, this, and this. And the churning group was like, we get it. We work with these creator-led businesses. We know exactly yeah. how to do this. And we're just going to give you help to do what you're already doing. And that that was like the reason we took this deal. Mm -hmm. Because it just made, it made sense to work with somebody who got it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, the way that 
the way that we met first was actually because Chernin Group, when when the investment happened, hosted a dinner. Yeah, yeah. And I, I was there because I'm friends with uh, some of the people there. But the way I became friends with them is because they watch our YouTube channel. Yeah. And like to, to find people, whether it's brands or business people, whoever you surround yourself with, one of the most, the greatest things for me is when someone actually watches the channel. Yeah. You know, when they actually are a consumer of what you do, then they have a depth of understanding that's right. different from just like, I see you get a lot of views. Yep. We could do that's, something. That is, yeah. mm-hmm. you're exactly right. Yeah. It's different from, okay, this person's big, like let's capitalize on yeah. that. It's, I get what you're doing. Yeah. And it's interesting because this business model that the Turning Group has Turns out to there's there's like there's this major benefit, this major drawback, right? Like the major benefit to me is you have this built-in audience for all of these creators that they support in all of their channels. And so when they create a business, these people want to show up. It's not like you have to pay to get in there. Mm-hmm. Like you hear these digital, these businesses that rely so heavily on paid marketing, you pull that spend, is it still even a business? Like right. if people yeah. are are people even still there? And the answer is no, there's not like a personality to it. Whereas all the businesses that the Turning Group invests in are like that. And this is becoming kind of a strategy that other investors are yep. starting to realize. This mm-hmm. like right. creator-led businesses, people want to show up. But the crazy drawback is you put an enormous amount of of trust behind the creator. Behind mm-hmm. a single person. Yeah. And so like, I don't own the majority of this business anymore, but like... It relies on you. Yeah. It relies, yeah, it relies on, on you. It's, it's, it's not like they can just be like, we're doing this. Totally. And they're like, all right, I'm out. And they're like, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. So like, that's a weird business model if you think about it. Like they're, first off, they're, they need me to kind of keep, but also what if I'm, a terrible person, you know, like what if, what anything if, they, what if I murder a dude? <laughs> like, well, whoa. okay. <laughs> All right, Doug, we will clip that uh, and get out of the garage. To turn in. Um, yeah. No, but, but you see what I'm there saying? are like, other car auction liability. websites. Like there are other car auction websites. The competitive advantage is you. Yeah. That's a lot of pressure. Yeah. It's a lot we, of pressure. We yeah. refer to this as like um, an inverted pyramid. So like a typical company, you know, like has a CEO at the top. And then there's like management and executives and you go all the way down to like, you know, entry level staff at the base of the pyramid. Right. Yeah. And if like, even if the CEO leaves, right, it's fine. Right. You just replace the CEO. A creator led business is the opposite. Right. Where you're at the, you're <laughs> at the, the bottom. The, the, so true. You're the tip of that pyramid, right. but you're, it's all, all the weights on you. Right. So other people can leave. Right. Entry level people can leave. The management can, uh, the, the executives right. can leave. If Doug leaves, the whole thing falls. Right, right. Not to put so much pressure That's on you. That's the scary <laughs> thing to me about, and so like they spent an enormous amount of time with me and like f- making sure that I was the kind of dude who was like going to right. stick with this. Mm-hmm. But like, that's a scary thing. Scary, yeah. For I mean, them. The, the positive thing is you have a library of content now that probably can drive people through, you know, a link in the description. Yeah. And if you make enough content over the next year or two that's evergreen enough, that mentions cars and bids. Right. There's mm-hmm. probably still, like, it's the one thing about YouTube that really shocks me. Like, we haven't uploaded a video in, you know, a few months right now as we're recording this. And we've done millions of views every month. Yeah. So it's kind of shocking to I've think about. I've always wondered about that. Yeah. I've, I've always, always, like, if I just stopped, how many months would, like, I mean, this is the longest break we've on. ever taken, and we're doing, like, a few million views a month. And oh, I, was, really? I was looking at that, and I was like, Oh my God, there's people discovering us for the first time right now and we aren't putting We're anything putting out. out and you know how yeah. hard it was to get a million views yeah, so and now hard. we can do nothing for nothing. Yeah. months. And it's the closest thing to recognizing. I used to, when I was starting out creating, I was talking to my brother and I was like, this is so hard because it's not like music where if I make a good song yeah. for the rest of my life, people will listen to that song. You know, like now I have to make a, I have to make a new video for people to continue to care and, um, but maybe you don't feel like that quite as much, but I think now things are changing, yeah. uh, that it also, I think it's also crucial. The type of content you do. That's true. Mm-hmm. If it's ever you're doing yeah. like, I went on Graham Stefan, who's like, one yeah. of the finest, mm-hmm. and like, he's doing like kind of daily, like the right, market right, right. did this. Yeah. 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 The market's down. The market's, market's up. The market's down. <laughs> yeah, the market's up. Right. Yeah. Everything's on that fire. Everything's great. Whole, yeah. his, his world is insane. <laughs> but, um, but I think car reviews are, are similar yeah. to what you're talking mm-hmm. about. Like, obviously, if I do new cars and I'm talking about right. that only lasts a few years, but that's still yeah, yeah a yeah. few years is real on YouTube. That's like something. Yeah. And older cars can last forever. But I think that that, yeah, nonetheless, mm-hmm. I just think it's like a wild business model. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't want to put all the trust in this right, right. dude. So, <laughs> so now that they have put all the trust in you, yeah. what is the money going towards? Like, how does it transform cards and bids if cards and bids was already working really well? Um. First off, it gives us some cushion to like 
hire some people to try some things to maybe lose some money and be okay, where okay. we didn't really have that before. And that's kind of nice. And also just like growth. I mean, I think cars, I think any car situation, there's friction in a transaction. And so we want to try to make it easier. We just launched shipping. And so like, that's one mm. thing oh, that people so cool. think about, right? Like, how am I going to get this car there? I'm going to fly out there and drive it. Well, now there's shipping integrated. You can get a shipping quote like that. Cool. There's all this other stuff coming that we're just going to try to make it easier and better. We want people who are on the sidelines, people who are sitting there saying, oh, I'd rather just go to a dealer and, you know, maybe just buy. I want them to say, you know what? They, they got all this stuff that makes it super easy to buy a car. So that's, that's our plan. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously growth. We're hiring people to like, to help us, you know, find more cars and that kind of thing. And that's going to be a, a component is of it. Is there going to be more content? Like, yeah. are there more Dugs? Like, is that, I how, think, is that how you de-risk Doug? Is you I add more so. Dugs? I think so. I think that we are, which probably I should have done a long time ago. I'm always, one of the things I'm always jealous of, although I'm not jealous of your massive production setup here, I'm always jealous of multiple people because like you guys can like riff on it. Like, like yeah. that, I wish I had. Like you watch Top Gear, right? Mm -hmm. Those guys chatting with each other was an enormous component of why people watched the show. They had this amazing relationship and I've never been able to do that. And so we just recorded a few videos in my garage with my buddy, Kenan, um, just to chat. Like it's instead of on Sundays, I post videos that it's just me. And I think having a dude, <laughs> that's like real meaningful something. And so I think that, I think that will be a strategy. There's also like challenges. You see groups on YouTube. Like once you get beyond two, I think it's, it gets really challenging because yeah. then you're in like a band and a band, yeah. you know, a, a bunch of artists together or a bunch of creatives together is yeah. like, no, I can be a recipe for explosion. Yeah, that's <laughs> couldn't, true. Couldn't other channels review a car that is being auctioned at cars? Yeah. And I yeah. think there's all, we're thinking about all sorts of that kind of stuff. Like yeah. what kind of, what kind of collaborations, what kind of integrations can we do with others? Right. Like, couldn't you thing? gift us a car, you know? And then, yeah. We, yeah. Maybe the, the end. No, yeah. Um, that's, that's the only, that's the extent that's of the all. idea. We gave, yeah. um, but no, I think they could like a lot of channels, like build cars and yeah, sell yeah, at the yeah. end of it, that kind of thing. Like, I think we want to do more stuff like that. Also, one of the interesting things that's happened, I haven't admitted this yet, but I'm willing to right now. I, because this has been my thing and I've been so laser focused on all the numbers and everything about YouTube, I've been kind of competitive. Yeah. With some of my other sure. YouTubers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. And now we got some money. Yeah. I don't feel that way anymore. Right. And now I just like embrace this, like love everyone. And I just, when I meet creators now, I'm like, tell me how I can be on your channel. Tell me how I can help you succeed. Mm. I, even if we don't plug cars and bids, I don't care. I just want to like be buddies with everybody. And that's been an amazing freeing feeling. Yeah. It's like, I don't have to work so hard to compete with these guys. And like, really we shouldn't compete because we're all in this bizarrely small world. Right. And I meet them at car launches and I'm like, oh, this guy. And now it's like, <laughs> Hey, you know, and yeah. that's how I want to be. That's and cool. So, yeah, it's cool. It's that's operating from a space of like, abundance, right? You're like right. everything, like there's enough here for, and, and if I look at them and say yeah. they got that, whatever video up before me and stole you know, a million yeah. views, whatever you get the next or one. But let's go. Yeah. To, yeah, 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 you yeah, know, yeah, like, yeah. It doesn't, it really doesn't That's matter cool. to me anymore. That's a peaceful place to be. It is. Yeah, that's it nice. is. And it's not one that I've been in. I've never been like overtly angry at anybody, sure. but I've been mm -hmm. sitting there competitive. Like, okay, they got this, these views and I got these views and I got to do this, this, this differently. Deep in the spreadsheets. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I, it's nice to not have to like well, think like that. What did you, what was the experience of receiving the money? I was in Hawaii okay. <laughs> uh, at a wedding, uh, and I, I, as as one does, this I've I've come to learn since then that this experience is basically the same for everybody. But you just are refreshing the app, <laughs> your <laughs> bank app, the yeah. yeah. bank app all the time, and then there was there, and it was and, like, wow, okay, I guess this is real. Like up until that point, I had tr one of the problems that I had. I like truly operated the entire summer. We did the due diligence process last summer as if it was not going to happen. Right. And sure. I was just like making decisions for the channel and for the business as if this wasn't, because mm -hmm. I just figured, you, you kind of have, have to. to, yeah. And so then it actually happened. I was like, oh crap, I got to figure out what the hell I'm doing. <laughs> I got to like put the money somewhere and I got to buy this car. <laughs> <laughs> I really better actually figure this out because I really didn't believe it. <laughs> yeah. Until, until it was well, there. Was there a sense the of thing to do? Actually. Like relief or was there a sense of like, I made it. What like was there yeah, a no, life? enormous relief? And 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 I've always kind of felt that like if I hadn't like I, I was born with an enormous amount of gifts just by being a tall white dude in America. Yeah, mm -hmm. not to get political. I I, I don't yeah. really feel that way generally. But like I had all these. I was smart. I was personable, and and I I was obviously good 
was relatable and, yeah. and so I came and I always kind of felt if I didn't do something like this, mm. I would be kind of wasted. <laughs> and so finally I felt like it, I actually didn't really feel validated that I had done something right. until, until that this moment. deal closes and it's like, okay, I've now taken this business. I've done the YouTube thing and that's grown. I've taken this, used that to do this business and turn that into this giant business and that's grown. And like that feels like, yeah. that's like, wow, I can maybe be proud of myself for the first time ever. <laughs> and I think, but I think that's a really, that's also plays into your comfort level of going out and not feeling competitive anymore. Yeah. Cause you've kind of gotten the validation. Like yeah. I think, we're, mm -hmm. you know, for anyone who puts themselves out on the internet, there's a level, we are, have a connection and a relationship with validation, right? Yeah. And everyone knows it and plays into it, right? YouTube ranks us on right. a, on a one out of 10 <laughs> scale, right? Yeah. Like we are, we are a very specific type of, you know, species that, that it has a connection to this level of external validation. Yeah. Um, like we read comments, we yeah. are in spreadsheets, we are comparing ourselves like we are. And so there's moments in time where you, you get to actually experience that value. And I think yeah. if you're lucky enough, yeah. you know, you get to experience this moment of like, oh, okay. You know, it's interesting that you say that you're exactly right. And the most recent one was when I bought the car and I announced it. And the video yeah. where I announced the video it, is beautiful. It's great. Yeah. yeah. Everybody yeah. was, and I was getting, I mean, I went to bed. I, I have a point of like replying to everybody all the time, emails, text messages. And I was going to, I went to bed that night with like 50 unread texts. I just couldn't get to everybody who was right. congratulating me. And it actually hit me during that experience. Like this might be the last time. Hmm. Like we're going to, you know, the, the, the business is going to go in a direction that, that I'm not like the only dude yeah. anymore. The, the channel, like the, the, the focus, obviously everybody view, everybody at TCG and us view the business as having a much higher potential growth mm -hmm, than yes. the channel. And so like, that's where we're going to focus. And I'm like, I don't know that I'm going to have one of these days where like, I just get people like freaking out on my Instagram, 250,000 mm. likes on an Instagram post. Like this might kind of be it. And I mm. actually like really took the time to appreciate it for that reason. Like this may be the last like real crazy mm. validation day that I ever get. And it's interesting also that you bring this up. This, this is getting really deep in my psyche, but when the money came in and when this all happened, now we have a CEO who's running this business, who's yeah. taken over my business, but mm -hmm. he's brilliant and he's doing a great job. But it's like, someone's taking this away essentially. And I've started to realize like there may be a day when I'm not getting recognized in airports or in restaurants and that could happen. And so I've started thinking through how do I want that to look? And um, there's been a lot of interesting concepts and thoughts in my mind about it. One is I've spent a lot of time on former rock stars, Instagram pages. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, for Rob inspo. Thomas. Yeah. Okay. Matchbox 20. Of yep. They were the biggest band in the world. Mm -hmm. Give me your heart. Make it <laughs> real. Yeah. Right? Let's yeah. forget all about they, it. They, <laughs> they, I mean, they were killers, right? And you know what he does now? He's married. He lives in Bedford, New York, and he just chills with his pets and his and his wife. Amazing. And I was thinking to myself, like, would that be okay? Yeah. And mm. I think the answer is yeah. Yeah. Of I, Rob Thomas. Would be. He's probably not going to sell out stadiums anymore, but he's got, he can still sit and be like, I used to do this. Yeah. And I kind of think I'll feel the same way. And if that's in a, if that ends up being how it goes, yeah. then that ends up being how it goes. Wow. I uh, love that. <laughs> I love the, uh, the honesty of you, you gotta prepare looking for inspiration for, for the next <laughs> yeah, phase yeah, yeah, yeah. through Rob <laughs> Thomas of Matchbox 20. Yeah. Johnny Resnick from the Goo Goo Dolls, same kind of thing. He's got a little girl <laughs> yeah. and he's just chilling. And I'm like, you know, there's something to that. Yes. There's like something to that. Well, yeah, I think we're, I think we're all in a sense, at least I feel this way, like trying to prove something to ourselves, Yeah, you know? Yeah. And then once you kind of prove that right. or, or if you just lose, you just forget about it at one point, you're like, is, do I need to do that? Right. Do I need to prove that? Right. Then you're just actually in search of peace. Right. That's exactly yeah. right. And I think for some people, I bet it haunts them. It's like, sure. I mm. did this I, thing and I want to replicate that feeling right. that I got when mm -hmm. I announced the car and I got a million texts and emails and everything. And, but I think realistically, it's hard to yeah. do yeah. that. I think you have to spend time thinking about or looking for inspiration of like, what is peace? Right. What, is and, the, and what I does think that look like? Some of these people should come to terms with the fact that uh, maybe my life used to be singing to 100,000 people in a stadium and now it's like playing with my dog in Bedford. But like, yeah. it's better to get to that point at this stage, I think, than to be 50 and be like, this is what I have to do yeah, because yeah, I have yeah, no choice. That's, yeah, that's totally. That's an interesting mm -hmm. journey. Yeah. So what are you, what are you going to do next? Like what, what's like, you're the chief car enthusiast. At the Cosmo. chief car enthusiast. Yeah, yeah. Official title, I mean, you yeah. got to keep 
doing the thing, right? And I still love the thing, which is yeah, great. I think, I think the answer is like, I'm going to keep doing this not only because I'm contractually obligated to, sure, but, but because, but mainly because you're contractually, <laughs> obligated. Yeah. <laughs> but because like, what the hell else would I do? Yeah. yeah. You know? And that was actually one of the problems before. Like I was, I was like running this business with yeah. Blake, but like, I was like making hiring decisions and like, I shouldn't, I'm a sure. YouTube content creator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I shouldn't be making hiring. I, what, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Yeah. And so now I go back to more creating and less of that stuff, which is great. It's nice to be out of like a true startup feel. And I think I'm just going to keep doing this. And so like the, the videos will keep supporting the, the platform and I hope great. the platform continues yeah. to grow. And like, this is what I love. So I'm able to kind of go great. back to it. And I swear if we sold this business and I pulled in way more money, I swear what I would do is just make car videos on YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, but I would do maybe more specific stuff that I would want to do or road trip in my career GT as opposed to the Hyundai Tucson yeah. interview. Yeah. Just yeah. straight to Bedford. Right. <laughs> yeah. 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 Move in next yeah. to, uh, <laughs> to Rob. To Rob yeah. and just hang right off into the sunset. <laughs> I, I think um, that's like a great piece of advice is like, look at what you're doing as a creator because if you don't enjoy it, success is only the opportunity to do more of it. And if that's that, exactly right, if that feels like success to you, that you get to then make great. more car reviews, you're on the right path. That's exactly right. And I think a lot of creators probably don't quite realize the yeah. gravity of what you just said. Success yeah. is the only the opportunity to do more of it. If, in other words, if someone comes and wants to pay you yeah. for whatever it is that you're doing, they're not going to want you to do less uh, yeah. or di gonna, something different. Yeah. They're, they're going to say, that. you're the reason this is succeeding. You knock it up a notch. Yeah. And do more and do it better. Yeah. Do more and do it better. Yeah. And so that's a great piece yeah. of advice for creators. Yeah. Um, do you ever meet people who are like burned out? And like yeah, don't of course. I, yeah. I think, and we've been there. Sometimes you know? we meet ourselves. Yeah. And we're yeah. burned out. And yeah. 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 We've been there, you know, like, and I think then you have to take another step back and be like, okay, I, I'm not trying to build myself a jail, you know, like I'm not trying to build myself a box that I have to be in. Yeah. So I, you, you have to like take control of that moment and be like, what is it? Yeah. You know, what is it that's, that's not working here? Yeah. Interesting. Um, yeah. And, and there's and, also two of us. Yeah. So we have to be on a similar page right, or right. respect each other's the differences. The pros and cons of yeah. having two people. Mm -hmm. Right. This is one of the things I've started to learn. Like I, I really like the, like I said earlier, like riffing off each other and being able to, you, yeah. know, you ask a question, yeah, you, yeah, whatever yeah. it is, it's like useful, but the drawback is scheduling, but also if your you're like depressed, yeah, lifestyle you don't want to do this. Yeah, 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 of course. If you're getting married, right. Okay. We got to, we got to, that's, you know, or having a baby or whatever. That's the, that's the problem with two is yeah. that you kind of are dealing with that situation. Time for us to launch an auction website. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I don't know. Everybody asks me, because I tell I tell my other creator friends, like, you need to do something. And they're like, what should we do? And I'm like, listen, I, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> this yeah, is yeah. for me to figure out. Yeah. Do something. Just Get check, out of here. Check yeah. your email inbox. See who's emailed you. <laughs> Go to dinner with them. Yeah. And just agree on a business. Maybe yeah. it's that easy. That turned out to be a $37 million email. <laughs> <laughs> so good. So it, what it means that you took a minority stake in, or a majority investment, yeah. right? So, so they own a majority of the company. You still yeah. own some of the I company. Do. So I still own a, a good chunk of it, which is, which okay. is another reason why truth be, I'm not actually contractually obligated to continue. I could leave at any time, but the, the, the yeah. obligation yeah. is I still want it to succeed because totally. I still own of a course. good portion and, of it. And there's so. now an opportunity for another exit. That's exactly right. Which at, at a, it, you know, with $37 million is not the full company. That means the valuation is pretty high. Higher than that. Right. right. So, so thus, the goal is we grow up further and there's a possibility that we could do this again. And so that's on my mind at the moment. Of course. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. You could buy Rob Thomas's house. <laughs> <laughs> in that, in well, that poor, scenario. Poor Rob, poor Thomas. Rob. If Rob's a fan of the show, you know, Rob, yeah. we're just, we'd love to come over and Dude, hang out. Just, in he has yeah. a Range Rover and he's just cr like, I, <laughs> wow. guys live yeah, in the dream. I can't we wait. would all be so lucky. Yeah, I can't I wait to check out his Instagram. Yeah, I, it's, I, not that, that yeah. Yeah. it's not that but interesting. But that's what's interesting. That's yeah, that's the benefit point. of his life. And so I, <laughs> I, I sit here and think about like, yeah, like that's, that's where I want to be. I want to be the Rob Thomas where I'm 50, just like playing with my cars and my dog and my kids and just like chilling. Oh, I gotta find, great. I gotta find my Rob Thomas. Yeah. I'm about to get on Instagram. If there's anything Start you take scrolling. away from this episode, it's find your own Rob Thomas. Dude, all yeah. these yeah. guys, I looked up all these guys and it's so, so interesting good. to see what all of them are doing. And they're doing some variation of that, whether it's by choice or because they like want to. And I think 
mentally, if you're in my world where like I was never a rock star, but I got billions of views. And so like yeah. that was a thing. That was, there's not yeah, that yeah. dissimilar when you think about it. And so like you, you could, it's going to happen to me. Yeah. You can choose to either do it and want to do it or do it and have to do it, but it's happening one way or another. <laughs> um, cool. Well, thank you, Doug. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Yeah. This was an awesome conversation. Yeah, yeah I agree. Great. I agree. I'm really excited to see what happens next. I appreciate um, that. Me too. And hopefully we'll buy another car. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah. We'll keep going. Or we'll give you one. Yeah. Or okay. you'll give us one. Who knows? Yeah. An Outback Wilderness. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. That sounds amazing. <laughs> cool. Well, thanks so much, Doug. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Thanks yeah. for coming down. I appreciate it.